Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to kind of go through and preface tonight's call, and I'm hoping it's a, a short call, but I believe it will be a pretty exciting call. I'm going to preface it with kind of telling a story. So last year, I, I finally got to move out of my 20 by 20 cage in Hong Kong and move back to the U.S., which has been fantastic, by the way. Um, love being back. Uh, but more importantly, I, I feel like there's so much important work that needs to get done, not in just you know China, one of the markets, but worldwide. I'm excited to see where we're going, and we're, we're taking great strides as a company. You know, in five years, we've hit the $150 million mark. It's a great, it's a great uh, stepping stone, but I, I, don't, I don't believe any of us want that to be a plateau. So with, in lieu of that, we, we've taken really the last year and looked internally at a bunch of things that we're doing to try to ask ourselves the question, we had the best, the biggest house on the block when we first moved in five years ago, is it still in that condition or have the neighbors moving in around us kind of made it like we have a one or two or three things that need renovating? And so in my personal experience over the last year, renovating has been, I don't want to say miserable, but the result of it has been fantastic. And so I look at the last year and say, yeah, we had to do carpet and paint and all that stuff. And it was, it was a process, but boy, the result of that process is it's the most comfortable we've had our house be in, in, in a number of years. And I kind of view Rx at a 2.0 as a similar process. You saw we're starting to make baby changes. We started with the new online services, and that had a, a much fresher look. It was designed for mobile first, given that that's kind of the direction that everyone was going. Uh, we've got a lot of your great feedback over the last couple of months to, to fix things up, tweak this, tweak that, and the priority, get our, get our ducks in a row and make sure that that's going to be something we all love. We've re heard your questions and feedback on the 188 and the business levels and what does that mean. Uh, luckily, with our Partners Council, all of this is getting squared away. So it feels a little bit like a renovation process, but I, I'm hoping by the time we get done with the call, I can paint the picture of what the house will feel like when we're done. Because that's the end game, and that's where we're uh, we're really trying to get to. And I see this Saturday as kind of being oh, okay. I just finished the carpet. I finished the kitchen. I finished the painting on the walls. We're not quite a hundred percent done, but boy, it, it's starting to feel like a home rather than just a, a a building with four walls and and a lot of work in progress, right? So this Saturday, you're going to see a bunch of things coming out. Not the least of which is the uh, online services, the 188 that people have asked questions on, that was kind of always meant to be a last ditch effort for somebody who, who tried to sell their way to Ultimate but didn't quite make it. The 188 was kind of a, an olive branch that was left there unfortunately it was programmed. It was made much bigger of a deal than we ever intended it to be. So that will be kind of swapped out and you'll see in lieu of that the chance for people to um, buy additional product, and then a, a reminder that they can still upgrade it. And of course, in their back office, they'll see a bar that will show their status, how far away they are from whatever status, whatever business level they're going for, and all of that. Okay, so just some things that you're going to see coming live this Saturday, but that's not um, by any means the most important. I want to start with a comment that we've heard pretty consistently for the last couple of years as we've had our elite awards and our annual awards kind of go out. And that has been. So we'll not be able to see that satellite People love. Hold on, real quick. Yeah, people love that there's multiple dimensions that they get credit for, right? Whether I'm a top earner, or I'm a fast grower, or I'm leading my team to, to grow the business. They love where that's going, but unfortunately, it's creating a little bit of a cluster. Because you get some people who are just really good at one thing and not necessarily the best at others, and then it becomes kind of subjective, right? Is, is Ian Chandler really more deserving of an elite status because he's the number one, I'll throw it out there, the number one whatever. I grew, I grew the most in matching bonus, but it's, it's because one of my people that I got four years ago decided to go crazy and just grow their business um, out, out of the out of the blue, I don't know that that person merits necessarily the trip or the additional recognition that happens on the elite trips more than someone who is number four or five in every category. And so we kind of wanted to take a different approach, and this will be the first that I think you saw the announcement come out, and that is 
whole thing to kind of wrap it all into one combined concept called the power ranking. So like we see sports teams, uh, they get different power rankings from week to week. So likewise, every single week, we have now been since week one of 2017 keeping track of who is in what place on the different areas that we kind of care about. And there's five areas that we kind of look at. There's customer and member acquisition. So that's looking at things like how many customers or how many members are you personally bringing to the table? <coughs> how much volume do those customers and members produce? Uh, do they stay around? Are they active? Are they placing multiple orders, et cetera? All of that gets factored in, into this one category. Now, of course, for everybody on the call, as a president and above, you're likely not so much in the customer acquisition phase of your business anymore. You're probably a lot more in the team development, leader, leadership development, um, team building mode. But, of course, customer acquisition is still a part of it. So we understand that there's a natural life cycle, and that's been factored in as well. All of this is based on relative behavior. So... Am I the best customer friendly? It's not a fixed thing we're looking at. It's based on the curve. So if I'm the best at getting new members and customers, I'm going to score high in this area. Retention, we look and say, your entire organization, is the retention good relative to everybody else? Is it less than everybody else, right? Is that something you can work on? Commission growth. This would be kind of like we have... Uh, uh, go that way Co uh, commission growth. Okay. That's where you get your base commissions. Okay. Saying, are you growing on a year-over-year -year basis? No, is it no, we're not. A good trajectory? Well, and of course, we factor both the slope and the magnitude. I just think we say, if you had a huge base, like I earned three hundred thousand dollars in base commission last year, obviously growing five percent is more meaningful than someone who had three thousand last year and grew fifty percent. We factor all of that in. Are you, are you sponsoring people? And the people that you sponsor, are they hitting title? Are they advancing throughout titles throughout the year? Um, so last year, I'll pick on them a little bit. J uh, James and Becky out of California had a, had a really high score in this one category because most of the people that they had sponsored throughout the year ended up going senior officer. I think they even had one president. And so it was a really good year for that. That we look at, and then again, everything... Um, and then the final one is just overall earnings. Obviously, we can't discount the value of people who have been building for, you know, a number of years, um, decades when we get down the future. So when we look at everything, all of this combined, it really paints a clear picture of who are the influencers, whether it's because they were here early on and they've amassed a huge organization or they're up and coming and their attention. The nice thing is that we're going to be able to see that and see a composite power rank relative to everybody else. And so starting, I believe, fingers crossed, the end of February, you're gonna see your back office then, this kind of slide that you see right there. You'll see your worldwide power rank, you'll see how you're doing in the region, in the market, and the city. And we really hope that that kind of gives you additional chances for bragging um, as much as anything else, right? If you're, if you're the number one in your city, then you might be number 400 in the world, but boy, I'm the number one in San Diego, or I'm the number one in, in uh, Gilbert, Arizona, or wherever I'm at, that's still a talking piece that gives people confidence that we really want them to, to leverage and utilize. Um, also to help them realize, wow, they're kind of the foundation of this new market or new city, which over time, of course, will become more and more uh, obscure. Okay, so the power ranking, that'll, that will be important, but here's where I believe it will be beneficial for you. You're going to be able to look at your individual status and say, wow, I'm in the top, you know, I'm in the top 40% in customer acquisition or I'm in the bottom third on retention. You're going to be able to pinpoint areas that you can, you can improve on, but more importantly, you'll have downline reports for your entire team to get their power rankings as well. And that I believe will help you manage your teams a lot better than anything you provided in the past to the point where you can just simplify your weekly reports and say, Congratulations, uh, Steve Schwartz, you are up or you're down or whoever it is you're working with and uh, really allow for a collaborative effort. So we wanted to kind of streamline both the recognition, right, but more importantly also to help drive kind of KPIs or goals or, or for people who are, you know, perfection oriented, this really gives them the perfect opportunity to kind of to always be improving.
Um, so I, if that is, if there's nothing unclear on, on how everything's will move ahead, but that's exciting. We're excited to see that come out. This will also drive largely in part the management, our ability to kind of streamline efforts on who we give time to, which is really important. You know, one of the challenges we've always had is as a, as a management team that loves interaction with our partners in the field, it's always the question of who do we spend the most time with and what really is fair. Um, and I think we've done a good job of balancing out and making sure that, that we're given the time that is required or that is merited by our top performers, this just helps us allow us to streamline that so we can say, we'll give everybody their, their time and attention, but if you are a player, if you're a top influencer, if you are a top power anchor, you're gonna be able to demand our time the way that you, frankly speaking, should deserve to because you're the one who's generating more, more sales, more revenue, and that helps us make sure you get the time and attention you need for the projects that are meaningful to you. So power rankings, that's, that to me is kind of like I just painted the walls. It's a nice to have, but it's not really making the house feel completely different. Um, business levels, we've kind of had these, and we've had the ultimate pack and the elite pack and things. And why we moved away from a specific pack and to a level, especially in North America, has a lot to do with the regulatory environment that is the USA, right? With Vima last year and the whole shakedown with Herbalife, I mean, it was kind of a crazy year for MLM. Um, obviously, with the current political situation, I don't know, don't know that it will get any worse. However, we don't want to take any chances. And so we kind of also looked internally and said, what are all the, the areas that kind of give us, that give Tyler Jones and our, 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 our general counsel kind of legal misfits? What makes him lose sleep at night? And one of the areas was having business packs, especially those with with ASAP bonuses. Not because there's anything inherently wrong with an ASAP bonus, but because of how it was kind of described. It was come in with an ultimate and your sponsor makes 200 bucks um, or 250 bucks or whatever, which we all understand that we earn commissions based off of the sale of product. However, it was kind of a, it was really a challenge to get people to, to say it the right way or to, to not say it the wrong way is probably more accurate just because it's so hard to say it the right way. So with that, we said, well, let's, let's do a couple of things. Let's remove the concept of the business levels and packs. Let's split those up. So a pack is just a pack. Because from a regulatory standpoint, it doesn't look good if a pack is only available upon enrollment and not available later. To, to a regulatory body, it should just be this is a pack that you can buy whenever you want to buy it, if you want to buy it, right? So there's nothing enrollment to you about it. So we've done that, and I'm, I'm sure you've noticed in the new shopping cart, you can, you can buy all of the, excuse me, the elite packs anytime you want. Now, whether people do or not, that's kind of up to them, but at least they can say, oh, okay, it, it's just a pack. Well, you still have some outstanding problems with that because a lot of those packs were designed with the ASAP in mind. What does that mean? Well, Let's call it for what it is. It means that you have less product than what you have in points. So, you know, for a, an elite pack that was 1,000 points, you probably only had 700 points of product. Again, that's kind of an area that's a gray area from a regulatory standpoint. It doesn't look that great. And then the government's going to say, wait, you only have 700 points of product, and you gave it $200. Okay, so sales points, that's... We all know that lines 2x, that is identical. What wasn't identical was off X office premium. Sometimes that was added in the pack, sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes people wanted it, sometimes they didn't, right? Um, we also had the event passes, uh, which kind of made sense when we had one big annual event every year. And now it's a lot more regionalized and we're going kind of to multiple locations multiple times throughout the year. Didn't make quite as much sense to force that into a pack with $150 value. So we've moved that out. That will just be kind of a la carte moving forward. Um, but I've heard good feedback from people saying the consistency of just, I get three or 12 or 18 months of X office premium. Uh, that's a winner for them. And even for the new person, they can try out all the functionality before they were have to pay for it. So that if they love it or don't love it, they can make that decision without having to be forced into it. Flex time ordering. Okay, a lot of these that you see is just repackaging of things that we've been doing 
just for the, the sake of consistency, right? Not everybody knew that on Monday morning they can go and place an order for the previous commission week to try to kind of round up volume either for a title or for whatever reason they want to do. Rather than kind of having that inconsistency in customer service, we said, let's just make that simple and consistent. So if you're a business lead or ultimate, you can call them on Monday morning and you can place some additional orders to round out volume for commission or whatever other purposes you need to. There's that flexibility and time to order. Early product access. This one just simply means that when R&D is looking for people to be a beta test group, they'll come to these people first. It doesn't mean that you necessarily will be involved, but if they're looking, they'll look for somebody who, is, who has the early product access first. Executive webinars. This one is also kind of a, on a as available um, basis. And we kind of look at this one as the who wants to be a millionaire, phone a friend or, or dial a friend uh, call. You're in a bind. You've got a really important question. You need some time with an executive, be it Fred, be it Deanna, be it Riley, Mark, myself, whoever it ends up being. You have that ability to get one or two of those kind of executive coaching sessions or webinars um, throughout throughout your, your career. So most people will tend to hold on to those. Obviously, at present and above and at certain titles and power rankings, we're going to be in a very tight communication with the executives anyways. So this doesn't replace that. Um, if we've been having phone calls with you or you, you've had a nice relationship on that, that won't change. What this does, though, is for somebody who's not a president, who's not a they've got a question that they really want to ask, they can choose to use that as they need to, or they want a webinar for their team, and then we can get those going. How that will work, just call customer service. They'll work with the executive assistants, and it's on a first come, first serve basis, assuming that they have they still have the, the credit to be used, and they will they'll work that out. And if there's a, if there's a challenge on the availability, they'll give the next available time. Um, and we may choose to batch some webinars from time to time, just for what it's worth. So Deanna gets booked on a product webinar, and the person asking says, I'd like to do one for my team. We'll give them the option, would you like to join this webinar that she already has scheduled, or do you want a different topic at a date that she's available in the future? So that's how those ones kind of work. Customer service has been trained to handle uh, all of those. Okay, uh, bulletproof compliance. All that means is on an annual basis, if you choose to, you'll have the ability to speak with somebody from our legal or compliance team to kind of look at your business and give you a just a couple of tips on how you can shore it up to be, especially in the U.S., even more regulatory, just a, a, a tight ship and to be safe on the side of the law and regulations. So that's what that one is. Of course, we know what the power entry is. That's awesome. Uh, before, that was kind of on a special only or with the air filter that came out, now it's just consistent. If you're ultimate, you can get a power entry. Now that doesn't mean that they can place it immediately. What that means is they get access to it when they optimize two lines or more in a given income position. So you still have to optimize, but when you do, you'll get the normal re-entry just like normal, and you'll get your power re-entry then activated. Last, uh, last one is automatic gold. Okay, that one is really exciting. Um, for people who can get to the ultimate, They'll just automatically become gold. We, we kind of looked at gold and said it, it works and it's a powerful motivator. But if we can get people to do more upfront sales in the beginning, that's also a good thing. So as much as you see on this, you know, I, I think people are asking the question, well, wait a second. Okay, that's great. And I see the, the benefit of going ultimate, but not everybody has $2,000 in their pocket. And so I'll address kind of the elephant in the room straight up um, immediately. I, none of us really hope that this becomes an investment opportunity. There's so many reasons to become ultimate that people feel they have to go borrow money or invest money to, to become ultimate. That, that's not the intent. We, we hope that's certainly not what it becomes. So I, as leaders, we're asking on each of you, to help balance this out. And here's kind of the approach that we feel strongly on. People are going to be able to buy whatever they're going to buy according to their budget. We know that we're not expecting that to magically change. What we are hoping is this changes the conversation for new members, where before it was like, well, here's a second line or a third line, and 
good luck trying to explain the benefit of that in a short uh, amount of time to a new rep, right? Obviously, a lot of you have learned shortcuts on the wording and things of how to, how to sell that, but we felt it was just, okay, it's easier to just give them, here's, here's the main benefits, but only do what you can do. You know, so I, I would imagine the conversation being something like this. Uh, Stefan Page, congratulations, sir. I, we're so excited that you want to join our, you know, in our team. We all go ultimate. It's a culture we have in our team. It's what we do for all of these reasons. I want you to get ultimate. It's, trust me, it will be the best for you. Um, most people will tend to come in and personally buy 500 to 1,000 points of product because that's, that's the amount you're going to need to be able to consume with you and your family. Um, it gives you a little extra room to be able to share with friends uh, as, as you're going and starting this. But more importantly, you need to speak authentically of what product resonates with you. Okay? But if you start with 500 or 1,000, how do we get you to ultimate? Because everybody in my team, we hit ultimate. Well, here's what it's going to take. Over the next four weeks, in our experience, this is what it's going to take. You're going to have to have two or three product sampling sessions to get. If you start at 500, you'll need at least three product sampling sessions with friends. And, and I can help you set those. And we'll, we'll teach you how to invite and how to get people there um, for this to work. Uh, if, you do, if, if you're able to do 1,000 points, you'll probably need at least one, but typically two. So which of these works best with you and what can you commit time-wise and then also effort-wise to be able to make this happen? Because I don't want to, I don't want to make a decision today unless you're fully behind. So you know, that's my bad attempt at kind of having that conversation with a new person, but hopefully you can see in that example, it, it fundamentally shifts the conversation from buy today, buy today, buy today to let's help you get this first low step goal and I've seen a lot of people shift on how they're then focusing on actually teaching the new people to get customers, getting preferred customers, because of course preferred customer volume counts towards your business level. Um, that's huge from a regulatory standpoint. Being able to show that you can get your business level through selling, <coughs> excuse me, the same way that you can get from consuming yourself, that really shows us up from a regulatory standpoint. And I hope that becomes a conversation. You know, I think we all know 50% of people who are active come in at the business level. That's just what they do historically. So again, I don't think most people will change immediately overnight, but if we can change the conversation to get them to start focusing on how to, how to sell to their close market, how to get some preferred customers in the first four weeks, how to do that social selling, I think that can really shore up our customer base, which obviously is huge in North America, but more importantly, that gives the perfect lead for people to follow up with on the next month to convert from customer to member, et cetera. So I won't go through and tell you any of that. The point is we hope this becomes a conversation and a goal as people are, are starting the business, and especially in light of what I believe is the most impactful change and the reason we're having this call tonight and that is the, uh, the question marks you see at the bottom of that slide. There's one additional benefit for becoming ultimate or a lead or business that I believe will far outweigh any of the other ones that you see on this table. Okay? And that is, uh, that is something that is happening to the team lead bonus. So I'll tell you a little story, and then we'll just jump right into it. Um, last August... Riley came back from a cruise in Europe, and then we just kind of had a conversation, and there was some discussion on the team lead bonus, right? In theory, when we, when we designed the comp plan five years ago, it was perfectly set up to help the brand new person earn enough in commissions to offset the cost of their products with the least amount of personally sponsored people that we had seen in the industry, right? On a one to four ratio, that was lower than USANA, that was lower than anybody else that we were competing with when we started, it's still among the lowest, okay? So getting four people to stay active and to be on auto delivery, great goal, and the whole power of four concept is kind of born from that. <coughs> now, don't get me wrong. The power of four is tremendous. If everybody really just focused on duplicating one gets four, gets four, gets four, obviously in no time we would be a billion-dollar company. Now, we also know and understand that not everybody's going to be able to do that. It's just not feasible. We understand what that is. 
what we didn't appreciate is just how difficult that was for the average person, right? So out of all of our active members worldwide, roughly 9% of them are currently earning a teaming bonus, right? Now, the theoretical max is 33%, so let's, let's call that for what it is. That means out of the money the company is willing to pay on team lead bonus, I have two thirds of the people who could potentially be earning, not earning. Okay, that's kind of a demotivator. Um, where the marketing was simple, get four years of this free, most people aren't getting it. And what we're finding out is, it's really interesting, the average time that it takes somebody to get their first $78 check on the team lead bonus is 12 and a half weeks. So from the time they enroll to the time they get their first $78 team lead bonus check, 12 and a half weeks. We all know that in this industry, you have one chance to make a good impression, one chance for the, you know, your, your, your fiance or your girlfriend to, to kind of really fall in love with you. And that is, it's, it's three months. If we don't have a, a very positive impact on the product or a positive experience in earning a check in the first three weeks as a member, we're pretty much gonna lose it, right? That's just how the stats work, it's how the numbers work. On the flip side, if people can get a check early on within their first three months, the chance and likelihood of them sticking around goes up by two, three, four, five times, depending on how much they are and how soon. So looking at that one, it was kind of like, that's really right at the fringe of when we're going to lose them anyways. And then when they're getting it, we've consistently heard back that there's confusion, right? So they're getting 78 bucks. They're like, wait a second, that's not enough to offset my products. And I'm sure we go back to the example and say, well, that plus the base commissions that you should have earned from your four people. And then they're like, well, I've got three of them in my power level. Okay, when all, all is said and done, it's not what they were expecting. Even if with, uh, with the base commissions, they got the full amount covered, it's still kind of a letdown when they finally get that 78 bucks. Unless the sponsor has done a really good job to set that expectations, usually it's a little bit of a psychological letdown. So we're spending money that's coming a little too late and unfortunately a little too little when they get it. It's not being used as widely and as well as we have hoped. Now, please don't discount the importance of the power of four, right? That's why gold is set up that way. I'm telling you, the teams that are growing the fastest worldwide, they all earn team lead bonus and their percentage of team lead bonus is higher than anybody else, else around the world. And I've said that for years and I, I'm sticking to it. The, what we found out though is team lead bonus was a byproduct of their duplication, not the cause of their duplication, okay? So what does that mean? That means we feel like there's money on the table that we're spending or we're willing to spend that it really isn't going where we intended. And that was to help the person before they get their three months to really earn enough money to get them excited, to get them to earn enough to cover the cost of their products and to get them fired up. So you add to that, plus you add to that some other, other nuances in the comp plan, right? And, and I'll, I'll illustrate that right here. So for everybody who has a pen and a paper in front of them, I'm going to have a little bit of a quiz. And if you get the answer right, I have a brand new water bottle that's launching on the 28th in North America. Brand new water bottle and filter with your name on it, if you can get the answer right to this question. Okay, so feel free to unmute yourself in a minute as soon as you think you have the right answer and then blurt it out and first come, first serve. But if you're wrong, obviously it'll go to somebody else. So if you sell a thousand points to a new customer today, right? This is on how we currently operate. How much, am I, how much are you gonna make? On a pay line? It all depends on how many lines you have and where that customer comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, does everybody agree with that? Yes. So this is, this is a preferred customer, not a member. It's a preferred customer. You sold a thousand points. Come on, this should be easy, guys. How much are you gonna make? One fifty. Okay. Anybody else disagree or agree? I heard you, Con. It's quiet. Any other takers? Come on, Rick, I know, I know you're waiting. I know you're, there's a, there's a water bottle with someone's name on it. Okay, 
can we see a can we see a problem? You are the best of the best. You're better than anybody else in North America at what you do and at Rx. Oops, sorry, I went down. Um, and right now, unfortunately, we have a little bit of a cluster, right? So let's go through a preferred customer. First off, we have to ask the question, is the sponsor of the preferred customer, are they already activated? Because if they're not activated, the first 150 points of that 1,000 points will go to activate the sponsor, right? So let's assume that they were activated. So here's the first question we had to answer. Next, uh, next question is, okay, how many lines does the sponsor have? If they have two lines, then Stefan's answer was right. Kind of, potentially, right? Stefan said 75 bucks. Well, 75, if the sponsor was active and they were commission eligible, then yeah, the, the volume would be auto balanced on two lines, which would be seven and a half percent of a thousand, which is 75 bucks. So that, Stefan, your answer was right, but it wasn't the whole answer because if I had three lines, I would have gotten 10%. 100. Yeah. And why is it 10%? Because it's two thirds of 15% because I have three lines, two of them are pay. If I had four lines, I'd get three fourths of 15% or 11.125%. Okay. For the new person who has to do basic algebra to even figure out the answer to this question, we feel like that's just too complicated. If the company's willing to give 7.5% or 10%, why not just call it 10% and call it a day, right? Okay, I, so I'm sorry, I'd like to give that water bottle up, but it's gonna have to come after this question because I, I think that one we didn't get quite accurate. Now this one is not so subjective. This one should be really easy. You get a new member, you sell them a thousand points. It's not an ASAP pack, it's just a thousand points of a la carte product. Same question, how much are you gonna make? 9563. Oof. Stefan, I love that answer. I love that answer. Anybody else disagree? They must have a different answer. It shouldn't take algebra to answer these simple questions, but that's what it's taken in the past. I love auto balancing because it solves the problems that we know it solves. The problem is it's too complicated, too hard to understand, and most of the time, even when they get paid, they're just like, oh, I just got paid. Why? Oh, I just got paid. That's the worst thing you could ever do in a comp plan. If people are getting money and they don't know why, it usually means you did something wrong. You mean the company, right? We want people, there's nothing worse than getting a present. Somebody opens it up and they're like, oh, I didn't really like that. I didn't want that. I wasn't expecting that. It was less, more. It just wasn't expected. That, that means you spent money and literally got nothing for it intrinsically, right? What we want is for people to know exactly what they're going to get and then get that. And when that happens, their confidence goes up, they're excited, all the psychological stuff that we know. So we say, okay, back to Stephon's $95.62.5. How did that, how, where does that come from? Walk me through the math on that, Stephon. You'll still get either the bottle or the filter. Yeah. So 1,000 minus 150 for qualification for your qualifying order. Yes. And then there's 850 divided by four lines. Yes. Three pay lines, you make 15% of the three pay lines. So that's yeah, and then that gives you $95.62.5. Yeah. Congratulations, that was excellent algebra. You did a great job on that. Okay. Where that's not entirely accurate is, I also have a thousand points on my line one, right? You didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, there's too many variables. I put you on my line one, so of course I have a thousand points there. Now, I don't have anything on my line two, but you can see in the picture there's nothing in my line two, so I don't get paid base commissions. But eventually, if I, if I balanced out the volume, I would get 150 bucks in base commissions, right? Yeah. But technically, only half of that would have come from the thousand points that I got from my new customer. So is it fair to say 75 bucks of base commissions and $95 in the auto balance to ASAP added together? That's what I should be getting from this new 
member, right? It's like 171 bucks, I think is what it ends up being. Yeah, unless you know you have, yes. Yeah, if the company was willing to give $171, AKA 17.1% of the volume on a thousand points, why make me go through the mental math loops and hoops to get it? Why not just simply say, hey, sponsor a thousand points, here's 17.1%, Merry Christmas. Why to make me wait for the person on the right to balance and make me go through the math? Shouldn't it just be simple enough to where I can say, do this, get that? That's kind of the world we're living in. So we said, okay, what if the team lead bonus money that we wanted to go to the person who is, who is responsible for the movement, who's creating new customers and new members? And also, by the way, just a subtle side note, from a regulatory standpoint, you also saw a problem because the preferred customers get paid differently than a member. So even though I'm selling the same amount of product, because there's a difference in customer status, my return is different. And that is a huge no-no from a regulatory standpoint. So, so behold, here is our new proposal to solve all of this stuff. To take the base commissions and whatever you get from a new customer or a new member, take that 17% in the example, right? And that, that was at 1,000, at 15, it's less than 17, and at 200, it's less, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Take that percentage. Put in your one simple upfront percentage and then add the team lead bonus money to make it even better. So guys, here's our proposal for the new team lead bonus. And of course, with the Bill of Rights, any proposal that we, that we internally discuss or propose has to go through our partners council to kind of get their feedback and their vote. And then go, of course, to our founders club members who have a ratifying vote the same way that Mark Wilson, Freddie Cooper, Riley Timmer, Deanna Lotson, uh, Wen Han, Jeff Yates, and myself have um, as founders. And only after we've had the majority vote in favor of it can we ever take something like this to go live. So that process has been uh, in works for the better part of the last three to four months. We've had numerous discussions with excellent feedback from all of our partners who have really helped us streamline this proposal to what you're about to see right now, okay? So the team lead bonus would simply be this. Think about the last two questions you just saw. You get a new customer or you get a new member, how much are you going to make? Well, here's the answer right here. You're gonna earn 15% of all sales, that's volume, all sales volume, to your new customers and members in everything they order in their first four weeks. After that, everything goes completely normal. You get base commissions, everything just like normal. But we're going to take all of that stuff and put it in together and say, you get 15%. So here's a simple example. I got two customers this week, 100 points and 200 points. How much do I make? It's going to be 300 times 15% or 45 bucks. So now the new member doesn't have to memorize any algebra, doesn't have to go through the logic of auto balancing, doesn't have to go through the balancing and the weighting of two lines, multiple, it just, I get a customer, one customer at 100 points, congratulations, I just got 15% uh, of 100, which is 15 bucks in my pocket. I got, it. you saw where there, two customers total 300 points in volume, 45 bucks in my pocket. Okay, but I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait a second, the example we just went through, you, you showed me how I got 17%, and that was just with the auto-balanced um, auto ASAP and the base commissions. So 15, obviously, is not the right percentage. Seems like the company's trying to, to lower a payout. And here's my answer to that real quick. 15 is what everybody gets, right? You're always going to get 15%. And you can get extra for either selling more or achieving a higher business level, okay? Obviously, the minimum sales is 150 points for a new member, right? If you sell more than the minimum, you're going to get a higher percentage on the team lead bonus. And if you can get a higher business level, then your percentage will also go up. Here's how it works. Business models and products sold. On the left, that column is how much you've sold to any given customer or member. 
And again, we don't care if they're a preferred customer or a member, it will be the same now. You're like, wait, what about reps? Reps are just a legal sub component of members. So all reps are members, but not all members are reps, if that makes sense. Reps just means that you sponsor a customer or a member and you have the intent to do business. Members is everybody who wants to buy wholesale. Okay. So if you are a member and you sell product at the minimum, less than 500 points, you're going to get 15%. To put into perspective, if I got a new member today and I sold them 150 points, I don't get an auto balance days app. And all I'm going to get on the 150 points, if I can get another 150 on another line, is 2250, 15%, right? So 2250 is what I can expect to get. In this example, I sold 150 points, I get 15% of that 150. 22 to 50, but the difference is I didn't need the other 150 under the line. So really I got 15%. That's twice what they were getting before. So congratulations, everybody who gets new customers now who does the minimum just doubled their paycheck. At the business level, or if I sell at the business, if I sell 500 points to, to 1,000 points, to well, 999, I'm going to get 20%. So you can kind of see how this works. The higher my title or the more I sell, the higher I get, all the way up to double the 15% base. So if I'm ultimate, there's really only one percentage I need to remember for team lead bonus, which is why it goes back to that conversation I was talking about in my example with mm. Stefan. Stefan, you want to be ultimate because you get 30% off of every new product that you sell to customers and the products that all of your new members buy in their first four weeks. That is huge. That's two to three to four times what you were making before. Merry Christmas. Congratulations. How can we afford it? Well, it's the auto balance stays up. It's the base commissions. It's the new, and it's the team lead bonus money all put together to pay you out. So obviously everybody on this one, they well, that's, that's exciting. That's, that's cool. 30% to the new person. What's the catch? Company can't be raising payout. So where is, how is this getting paid for? It's what I just described. It's money that we were already paying, but we were paying later on down the road or it was kind of convoluted. We're adding those together. Um, and then because the team lead bonus is a bonus, it, it, it pays on that volume immediately. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples and you're going to see how this is going to work. Okay. So now you sell a thousand points to the customer, how much are you going to make? Let's assume we don't care what your business level is. You just sold a thousand points. At minimum, you're going to get 25%, 250 bucks coming your way. Okay. Same thing. You get a new member and sell a thousand points to them or they enroll and then they buy a thousand points of product. How much are you going to make? Same thousand points, same minimum percentage. At 250, obviously, if you were ultimate status, you would be getting 30% on that or $300. Any questions so far on this? If, if it looks clear that I'll move ahead. Yes, got, but just one question: if so, if a customer buys 200 points, and in that same four weeks later on, like during that four weeks, they buy more, like let's say they, they do yes. 1,300 more. Okay. What would happen? Yeah, that's a great question. So how it works is you see that product sold. There's kind of four levels on that. There's one, two, three, four, right? There's four levels, I guess you could call that. As a customer or a member moves up in a level, the percentage will also fall. So in your example, you said they did 200 points the first week. That's level one, which means if you're just a member, you'll get 15%, right? And if they go and they buy another 1,300 points within the first four weeks, that would bump them to that highest level, and you would get 30% of the 1,300 points. Okay, so, all right. So basically... We pay it weekly. We pay weekly. So whatever level that customer is, when the week ends, that's the level percentage that you're going to get on them. But remember, if you had a business level that was higher than member you would get that business level percentage. So we pay the higher up. 
So simple example is I'm an ultimate. It doesn't matter how much they buy. When they buy, I'm always 30%. If I'm elite, I won't be any lower than 25%. But if I sold, if I sold 1,500 points, I could get 30. If I'm business, the lowest I'm going to get paid is 20, but I can get more for selling more. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So basically, if week one they do the five, 200, it's yep. let's say I was at the lower bracket myself. Let's say I'm a member. So then I would yep. be 15%. But the next week, that same customer buys 1300. That bumps them into an ultimate because of their first two, 200. So now I'm making 30%, not of the 1500, but of the remaining 1300. Correct? You got it. Absolutely okay. correct. Yep. Thanks. No, that's a great question, Stefan. Good question. So let me give another example, and you'll see some, some kind of interesting things. So here was before. I'm going to say I've got line one that has 3,000 points of carryover. All right. And let's say this week I sponsored three new members, and I got them all to buy 1,000 points of product. Okay, so kind of just – and there's a dozen examples that you'll come up with that you'll think about. Um, but I wanted to kind of point out some points that make this easy to understand. Okay, so here's what you would have gotten. You would have had 3,000 points on line one, 3,000 points on line two. All of that volume would have been used, and you would have had 450 bucks in base commission. We agree? Your new title would have been senior manager, because that's what 450 bucks would get you. That was above 375, you'd be senior Okay, with this change, Right? There's something to consider. Because new, when you get a new customer, you're paying immediately on that volume in team lead bonus, right? You got paid immediately on the volume. But you didn't get paid in base commissions because that's separate. So base commissions will be on all of your downline volume, all of the volume that your new customers do after their first four weeks. Right? You, all that volume still rolls up to you but you got paid immediately in a team lead bonus and not a base commission. And so obviously we can't keep using base commission dollars as the title advancement. So what we're changing it to is just the volume equivalent. So, and this is, I mean, there were discussions four or five years ago from Duke's team, I remember who were asking kind of, can we go this direction just because it was easier. I mean, when you think about earning $500 in base commissions, you have to pull out a calculator and divide that by 15% and you realize, oh, I have to have 3,333 points on a pay line to hit vice president, to get 500 bucks, to get vice president. Okay. Now we're just going to say, well, let's forget the base commission dollars. Let's just go straight to the volume points. Okay. So what we're going to say is, hey, on your line in a given week, how much total volume did you have? Now, some of that volume may have paid you in team lead bonus if you sponsored it. Some of it may have paid you in base commissions if you didn't sponsor for, if they were outside their first four weeks. We really don't have paid in team lead or base commissions. And so it would just say, oh, vice president, you get 3,000 points on, a, on total pay line volume, and you are now a vice president. So here's that same example you can kind of see. Line one, I've got 3,000 points of carryover, and I got my three new people that I personally sponsored 3,000 points, right? So because I sponsored those three new people, now I'm going to get paid immediately in a team lead bonus, right? So I got three, three, three people at 1,000 points each. Each of them will pay at least 25%. So I'm going to get 750 bucks in team lead bonus. Now the extra three thousand that would have gone, that would have been used in base commissions in the previous example, actually still stays there. So my three thousand points of carryover doesn't go away, but because I had three thousand points on one line and I had three thousand points on my pay line total, I still get my new title of vice president. Okay, does that does that make sense? Any questions on that example? Okay. If I were to point out what does that mean, the first takeaway would be if you get paid in team lead bonus, you're not going to get paid in base commissions because we took all of that base commission money added it in the team lead bonus. So you can see in this example, I got 450 before, now I got 750. This team lead bonus always pays more than what it used to pay before. So I got 750, 
my 3,000 points of volume still carries over, and if I get additional volume in line two that's not team lead bonus volume, then I'll get paid in base commissions and then use the volume according to normal. And then you saw, because I had 3,000 total points in line one and two, I ended up getting vice president. Are there any questions on, on that example? Ian, Rick, I got a question. What, what, okay, let's just say the same scenarios here, but this three people get placed on your income position number two. Okay. You get the 750 down from your number two, and then the 3,000 flows up, and let's say it fl flows up opposite right here. Uh, then you make the 450 here, and then that volume flush, uh, the volume goes away. Um, great question. The answer is no. So here's how Team Lead works, right? It takes, if you sponsored them, yep. all of that volume just pays you immediately at whatever percentage you get. So in this case, you got your 750 done. And that volume for you, Rick, is, is going it, to, it paid out immediately. So it's not going to give you volume and base commissions as well. Does that make sense? Even if, even if it was below like six different re entries, or 100 re-entries or any of that, you got paid into team lead immediately. And that percentage is always higher just for what it's worth than what you would have gotten in base commissions, even if it was through multiple centers, right? And I can show you a bunch of examples later on a, on a separate call, right? Okay, so, but it would, flow, it would flow up to your income position one, though, the 3,000 points, or no? No, because you got paid immediately. But what it would do is, Everyone in between your two and your one, and everyone above you, they just got the 3,000 points just like normal. So they would get base commissions just like normal. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Except if, I, then, except if I was a on the old way, if you got paid 15% of 6,000 points, that would be 900 versus a 750 here, if you were at this level. Because you get paid 3,000 on your two and 3,000 on your one. 3,000 points. Yes, but you're forgetting, you also use the 3,000 points that you had on your line one. You're saying it stays there, so that, that, that balances, okay. Yeah, it more than balances. We, we ran through the math on this. In every scenario, you earn more intently than you would have gotten in base. Okay, I trust Even you. You know, yeah. four or five different entries and it's because that carryover doesn't go away because you didn't you didn't earn a base okay. so actually i've got to believe that that carryover is going to pay out at 15 percent half of which is kind of a trivial to what you would have had so and i can go through those are some awesome examples and pretty advanced i'm happy to sit down and go through i went through probably 10 or six, 11 different similar examples and uh the math always shows team lead is the winner. Okay. So yeah, you need team lead bonus immediately. And then everyone who is not the sponsor, they just get the volume in base commissions just like normal. So none of that has changed. Does that make sense? Yes. Great question. Okay, I know a lot of people are asking, okay, well, wait a second, I'm a business or I'm an a I'm a member or I'm a leader, I don't know what I am, right? Starting this Saturday, we're going to have kind of an upgrade opportunity. So obviously, we know that people came in the last five years under a number of different possible circumstances. So we want to be the most fair that we possibly can. So we're going to look at a couple of things to kind of say, what is your actual current business level? Okay. So obviously, we're going to look at how much volume you did in your first four weeks. We'll include your, both your personal volume and preferred customer volume. If you did 1500, then you would be ultimate. If you did it, then we'll take the highest we could give you. But then we'll look at a couple of other things as well, right? So if you have the 2X today, or if someone in your team has 2X, they can't be lower than business, right? If they have more than two lines, they can't be lower than business. And depending on the number of lines they have, either they got it when they first started because they got three or four or five lines from, you know, whatever pack or whatever product they purchased, or they optimized to get additional lines. We don't care how they got those additional lines. If they've got them, they'll be grandfathered at a higher, um, much higher possible thing, right? And then of course, if you have a power entry, then we're going to assume that you're automatically 
alternate, regardless of how you got that. So you can see the chart right there. Where, uh, the computer has already run kind of the, uh, the, the test on us to see who would be what different level. You'll see that come out in your back office this Saturday. And when it comes out, you're going to see kind of a, a, a countdown timer that will say you have four weeks left. And whatever your level is, all you have to do is the difference between what you want and what you are, either through product that you buy yourself or through preferred customers, and that will upgrade you to whatever it is that you want. Because we figured it wasn't fair to, to, to launch the new team lead bonus, and people realize they can get 30% for life by the ultimate and not give them a chance to hit ultimate. Okay, And again, we'll give them the, the highest possible chance. If, if you feel that there is a a discrepancy or there was a concern, call customer service, they're, they're readily trained to handle all the questions and kind of look at this and say, yeah, what's fair and equitable? Any questions on kind of how this would work? I think it's pretty clear. Excellent. Okay. Then uh, with that, let's just go over real quick one more time on the business level enhancements. You'll see there at the bottom now, the minimum TV bonus, and it's minimum because they could get more if they sold more, but if I'm business, the lowest I can get is 20%. Elite, the lowest is 25 and ultimate 30. Again, I really hope this becomes a simple conversation point with people who are deciding to do the business to help them set a goal, make a strategy, make a plan on how to get to those higher business levels. Um, people have asked the question, well, wait a second. If there's that much pressure up front to get ultimate, what about the people who can't hit it? They can't get ultimate in the first four weeks, which is a very valid question. And the answer to that after a lot of discussion um, is we just expect on it, plan on it. Throughout the year, you'll have at least two and sometimes three upgrade opportunities for people who made it to the end of their first four weeks. They did everything they could. They couldn't quite get that percentage. No, they shouldn't quit. Keep them going. Keep them excited. Keep them building, right? Um, team lead bonus isn't the only bonus and the only way that they can make money. I mean, there's a, there's a ton on the residual side that is still lost. But for people who kind of just think it's stuck, let them know that even after we start, within the next three months, you can pretty much expect to have another upgrade opportunity. And that will kind of be two or three times a year. We don't want to have them, you know, so that they can count the, the days and know exactly when it goes because then it becomes – well, if I can wait until then, I'll just do it later. We don't want them to procrastinate, but we don't want people to feel like I missed out completely and there's no, there's nothing I can do. Um, so just, just think about that. And of course, customer service will work with people uh, on this to make sure that, that it's a fair opportunity for everybody. But I really, again, hope that it changes the conversation from let's get you your two or three or four lines to let's see what it's going to take to get you to ultimate. Here's why it's obvious. You want 30%. Everyone on my team does it. You're going to buy how much up front and let's plan the next four weeks so you can get the <coughs> That does a lot of things right. for, if we can get new customers, excuse me, new members to get preferred customers in their first four weeks, that literally all but guarantees us that we have no problem from the FTC, from the government, in any way, shape, or form. Because when you have that volume of customers that are just buying the product, I mean, you're completely set. So that was one of the initiatives, not the major. The biggest that we wanted to address with all of this is going back to the house um, story, right? After five years, your house is nice, but you start to notice, ah, I don't like the, the brown paint anymore. It's kind of out of style, and the, the, the stuff is starting to wear and tear. We really feel this kind of shores up arcs for the next five to 10 years on the comp plan and really puts us in a very competitive, um, very competitive light. Competitive because now it does what we wanted originally. We wanted the people at the very beginning to have a lucrative opportunity, but also not violate the concept of do more, get more. We, we feel strongly on that as an, incentive, uh, as an incentive for people to get going. And the best part is this doesn't impact payout, right? We're committed to paying 50%. We don't want to go and stray from that. That's one of our, our mainstays on why we're different, better, and special in the, in the industry. And so this really, and when you have 50% payout, it gives you a lot of flexibility that 40% plans don't have. 
we can have the upfront and the middle and the residual at the top and not have to sacrifice in any one area because we have a bigger share. Where other people only have 40% pies, it's kind of pick and choose. Do you want to only cover up front or only cover the top and, and, and forget the people in the middle? Or it's kind of pick your poison where we don't have that problem. Okay? Now, to be fully transparent, because I'm sure you guys are, are saying, okay, well, wait a second. If team lead bonus goes up, you know, up to 30%, obviously that will either raise the comp plan or it will do something. And my answer to that is this. Okay? In full transparency and full disclosure, here's what you're going to see a change on. You're going to notice a slight dip in matching bonus as a percentage but not as dollars. And let me explain kind of that, right? There's a whole lot of things that happen with this change. Number one, worldwide, the average volume that people do when they come into the business is around 250, 275 points. If that went from 250 to 275 points, 300, because people are now more excited to become, to achieve a leader, achieve ultimate, Right, that would pay for the entire thing itself. That would grow your business and your paycheck faster than anything else we could do. We call that wallet share. How much product does a new customer or new member, how much sales do they generate in their first four weeks? That number is huge. And it's very difficult to move, but we feel strongly that this will move that in a positive way, which if it does, your paycheck will only go one direction, and that is up because you have more volume going through, more volume means a higher paycheck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The other is the average number of new customers and new members that a, a member is expected to, to bring into the business is right around 1.2, okay? If that number goes up, again, your volume and the whole business just grows. So we fully expect this to incentivize people to do, to do more product sales up front and to get more customers and members. And if any one of those happens, everybody's paycheck goes up immensely and as well the entire revenue of the company. Why is that important? Because you get paid team lead bonus, which doesn't have matching bonus on that one generation, okay? You're going to see a percentage dip. It'll go down if you're making, let's say, 100 bucks in, in matching bonus, you can expect it to probably drop on the same revenue, probably drop five bucks, right? Some more, some less, but on average, around five bucks. But what that does is you have, you have seven generations, a ton of people who before you had one little guy, you know, kind of sharing $78. Now it's one little guy getting a lot of money up front and everybody else kind of went down to $2 or a dollar or 50 cents or, or something around there. So there's a little bit of that going on. But remember, it's only on one generation because that volume of the new person still gives base commissions to everybody else above them. Just the sponsor gets paid in team lead, not in base. So that's where you're going to see a little bit of, of impact on that. And I want you to understand that. So if people are asking questions, then you can say, why did my, base, my, why did my matching um, bonus go down? I don't think most people will feel or notice a difference specifically because behavior will change. But if behavior didn't change, if the same amount of volume that was being ordered by new members and new customers before, which is like 274 points, if that stayed the same, and if we got zero additional enrollments as a result of the change, so if everything stayed the same, then yes, there would be a shift from, you know, robbing their rights to pay for is a, is a bad way of wording it, but you can kind of understand the concept. There would be a shift and you would feel a dollar decrease. Where we feel, will there not only not be a decrease in the dollar amount earned, but an increase is this has already proven that it's, it's getting people to talk about getting new customers. And as we shift from 275 points of the average to even 300 on the average, you will have not only no dollar impact, there will be no dip, you'll earn more money. So in the middle, at the top, we, we all kind of said, okay, I got a smaller percentage, but my whole pie is a whole lot bigger. And I'm bringing this up to you to be very transparent so you can know exactly what is happening and what isn't happening. 
What isn't happening is the company, we're not lowering our payout percentage. We're committed to the 50%, kind of 50-50 split with our partners. We're committed to that. We're not changing that. What is shifting around a little bit is where before I got paid in base commissions, now I get paid in team lead bonus, and it's more than what I was getting before, and some of that came from a little bit from matching bonus, a little bit came from the savings and the cost of living, but all of that is very de minimis. And at the end of the day, we had to ask ourselves this question, which is better? A slightly, slightly higher percentage of a much smaller pie or a slightly smaller percentage of a pie that is growing out of control? And we all said the latter. And uh, after discussions with our partners, councils, and founders clubs, we, we voted and, and decided we're going this direction. So a couple of takeaways I hope that we have from this call. I really believe that this will change the way that people are incentivized and motivated to build the business. And even if it doesn't, the new people will be earning faster, on average twice as fast, if not more, twice as much as before. And when the, the little guys win, we all win. The new person makes a little money. That's a huge emotional win. They know why they got it. It's easy to understand. They can calculate it. And when that happens, they're motivated to go and keep that happening. And that fosters duplication. What I see from this is a perfect renovation. The house was big. It was spacious. It was nice before. It was the nicest on the block when we first started. And five years later, we're keeping that up so that we're even more competitive than the best of the companies that pay all up front and don't pay in the middle and don't roll up volume and, 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 and. We roll up volume, we pay in the middle, we pay at the top just great because we have a higher higher percentage. I see us maintain, maintaining a uh, competitive advantage over all of our competitors, but more importantly for the new person, they never have to worry about an algebra, <laughs> algebra equation ever again. It's just, hey, how much did you sell? This much. Here's your percentage. So I really hope the team we bought us kind of changes the way we look at getting our new people excited to go start building the business. And then make sure you capitalize on that first paycheck. When they get their first team bonus paycheck and that just comes in off of the first sale, make a huge deal about that. Make a huge deal. And I promise we're going to see dividends coming from this for years to come. I really, I, I really believe that. And not only myself, more importantly, all of us as owners, we feel that this is, uh, this is, this is not everything. I don't believe this is going to take us to a billion dollars. But I believe very much that this paves the way for a billion dollars to happen a lot easier than we would have had otherwise. So there is the team we brought us. I'm going to turn the time over to everybody to ask questions. Whatever you want to know, whatever you'd like to ask, the time is yours. Feel free, because I want you to feel confident and to know everything that you need to know so that when you're asked questions from your team members, you can speak with, uh, with enthusiasm, with confidence. And any questions that you have, Rick, that was a perfect, perfect question. Okay, I, his question was this. If I have eight re-entries and I sponsor new people and put them all underneath my, my number eight, and it rolls through seven other re-entries all the way up back to me, am I going to get paid base commissions on all those eight re-entries? And the answer is no, you got paid directly and the bonus off of that volume. Now, if you had other volume that week that went through all eight re-entries, of course you would get paid in base commissions just like normal. But everybody who's not me, who didn't sponsor those new people, they got all of that volume just like normal and got paid base commissions, and there was matching bonus on all those base commissions, so none of that changed at all. But in the case of you being the sponsor, you just got paid immediately in team lead bonus. Because most of the time, let's be frank, when we sponsor people, especially at the beginning, there usually isn't a power line to earn immediately off of the base commissions. And that's, that's, I mean, you can ask around, that is the number one complaint that we've ever had on our comp plan. And that is, they just feel it, sometimes it takes a little too long to earn money. This is money that we thought we're willing to pay it. Financially, it works for us. I make them wait, and uh, let's get them excited. If we can add the team bonus to make it pay a little more, better done. What this is not is I don't think this is a, we don't want to stray from our mold. We know it works. Getting customers who then become members, getting members who, who duplicate and become gold, the power of Ford, all of that stays the same. What it changes is the numbers change a little bit. So the power of Ford video, Jeff, with all due respect, we're probably going to have to up 
update those numbers, I believe that will go up significantly with this change. So, uh, all right, I've done a lot of talking. We'll turn it over to everybody with questions. Go ahead and uh, feel free to fire away. Hey, Ian, Rick, again, just clarity on another thing. Let's say I have a preferred customer. I'm ultimate. They buy 100 points. I make $30, and then they go on, they're on auto ship. In week five, they buy another 100 points. That's going to auto balance, correct? You got it. So the auto balance after 28 days is normal. Yeah, and it's not 28 days. It's four, four Fridays. Is, I guess, oh, yeah. Well, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, same day. And retail profit's still in play. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, whether you pay a teaming bonus or not, or whether it pays later, the retail profit is absolutely in play. Thank so you. if they buy a little price point, you're going to get the difference in a retail incentive. And will customers have a chance to log into their uh, back office with their uh, use their number and password to be able to change their auto ship? Of course. Okay, great. Did the uh, title advancement, did that slide, did that make sense to everybody? Yes. Right? And, and I guess I guess there's another subtle thing on that one. Optimizing, right? So I'll give an example. On line one, I've got 13,334 points of carryover volume. This week I sponsor 14, 000, or excuse me, 14 people at 1,000 points each. Now I get, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get $14,000 times whatever my pay, my team league bonus percentage is, let's call it 30%. So I get 14,000 times 30% and I got paid immediately in the team league bonus. Okay? Um, but you're gonna say, well, wait a second, what about my optimizing, right? I mean, shouldn't I have earned leadership bonus, the income position bonus, because I had 13,000, excuse me, 14,000 points on my line too. Well, the answer is of course, so for title advancements and for optimizing, we look at total volume, regardless of if it paid in team lead bonus or if it paid in base commissions, but we look at it by line. So in that example, if I had put all 14,000 points of my person sponsored people in line one, well, I wouldn't have gotten an income position bonus because I just had a really strong power line, right? But if I had 14,000 in line one and I sponsored 14,000 in line two, I'd get paid in team lead bonus, and I wouldn't get paid in base commissions, but I wouldn't use up the volume either in line one. And at the end of that week, it would say, congratulations, you have the optimized, here's your income position bonus, just like normal. So basically what I'm saying is we didn't want to impact income position bonus, pay line bonus, or titles, because some volume gets paid in team lead bonus and some in base commissions. Does that make sense? Yes, but... 14,000, if you're at ultimate level, that would be 4,200 team lead bonus, right? Correct, correct. And that would make you more than a senior officer, correct? Uh, no. Because no. now the titles are only based on volume, not on income. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. And that's, but, but that's so that we can say, we can remain consistent with the four. No, we didn't want to change the game. The game is still the same. To get this senior officer, I've got to have two lines that optimize. Well, it's the definition of optimizing, 13,334 points on a single line, even if those points paid in team lead bonus, which again, can get you more than 2,000 bucks. We agree. Yeah, makes sense. The max you could earn on a line is still 13,334 as far as points go. You're not using yes. fourteen thousand. That was just your example of, uh, you know, team lead on sponsorship. But you're, you know, for your title advancement, you still can only get thirteen three thirty four on the line. You got it. Great observation, Rick. I love it. Any other questions? Well, just just to confirm. So you said that you would get uh, income position bonus. Yes, you would. Yep, in that example. Okay. 13,000 points come from my team below on line one. I have 13 that came from myself on line two. I've optimized two lines. I get income position bonus. How they handle the uh, cost of living increase on the, in that scenario? 
Yeah, cost of living is still based on base commission, so not team lead bonus. Okay. So that's where I see, we're going to see a little bit of a dip on cost of living and a little bit of a dip on savings bonus. But what would you rather have? Would you rather have credits towards a savings bonus that you're going to get a year from now? Or would you rather have the higher percentage, potentially up to 30, immediately? And I think most, we run the numbers, it always makes more sense to pay. Yeah, bonus. for all of our new people, yeah. Yep. Yep. I hope this program ends up being golden, but uh, I really, really appreciate everybody's leadership and everything you do. Um, all of us at the home office are, are frequently, you know, sort of we, we, from time to time, we'll pause and kind of say, it's been five years. It's been a long five years, but it's been an awesome five years, and I couldn't imagine uh, having better leadership than we've been blessed with over the last five years, guys. So thank you for everything you do. Um, thank you for this, uh, Ian. Very, very helpful. And I'm awesome. pretty excited by all the new the new stuff. That's great. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah, guys. Okay, thank you again for being on the call and uh, getting into